Are you satisfied with the final version of the Volker rule, the rule with your name on it? Well, it's got my name on it, so I have to be satisfied. <laughs> no, I think it's, a, you know, it's basically a good rule that achieves what we were after. We wanted to reduce unnecessary risk in the, in the banking system. Inflation remains very low today, and considering the imminent American energy independence, people are, more people are thinking that uh, we should worry even less about inflation. Do you agree? Well, I, I'm always worried about inflation, I and mean, that's in my blood. And because I think inflation is a danger for all economies, and it's easy to get out of hand.在所有现代中央银行家里头，沃尔克可能享有最高的声誉。可能超过格林斯潘，在特别是在金融危机以后，原因很简单，不是因为沃尔克特别睿智、学历特别高，或者说是特别怎么样，而是因为他敢于在关
and how are the American banks' health condition today, and um, how will your rule affect them and also the international banks operating in the United States? Well, well you know, I think American banks are now in better shape. With unquestionably, they're in better shape than they were uh, before the crisis. Their capital is higher. Their liquidity is better. Their risk taking has been reduced. Uh, the rule. The great vocal rule is only just coming into effect, but the banks have been anticipating it. So it's already been partly effective in reducing risk taking. And there's similar efforts in Europe. Uh, they're approaching it somewhat differently, technically, but there are efforts all over the world to increase capital requirements and to increase liquidity. And those are very important. Uh, collectively, that is the basic reform. And the Chinese banks are also moving toward the universal banking model. In your view, how to balance the innovation and well, the stability? My, well, my advice to China would obviously be uh, Chinese banks, in my understanding, have not been active in speculative markets. But they ought to be prohibited, just like we did in the United States. I, I recommend that to the Chinese authorities very warmly. And um, let's talk about American economy. How do you how do you see the American economic recovery so far? Well, the American economy now for several years has been increasing fairly steadily with little ups and downs, but uh, around the rate of two percent a year, which is not very vigorous, but it's better, <laughs> and it's continuing to be better. And compared to elsewhere in the developed world, it's been doing pretty well, doing better than Europe, better than Japan. Obviously, nobody's doing as well as China. <laughs> <laughs> no, China is in bad shape today. To we can't expect to do what China's doing. But the American economy, I think, is a little safer, financial system a little safer, mm -hmm. and we are getting some economic growth. In relative terms, we look reasonably good. Does it warrant the American economic condition today warrant a quicker or slower QE tapering? Oh, look, I'm going to leave that judgment to the Federal Reserve. They're getting paid for that. Yeah. All I do is kibitz on the outside. Yeah, no, what's your bet? You can be sure that they will go about that decision-making with great care as they, they've indicated very modest changes, uh, very cautious changes, and I'm sure they'll continue to be cautious. How do you see the effectiveness of QE, and what are the consequences of the well, withdrawal of it? A, well, look, that's a, that's a very controversial matter. And from the one side, uh, people will argue it helps to stimulate business activity, to keep interest rates very low, to keep a lot of liquidity. The danger on the other side is it stimulates speculative behavior. We can deal with the speculative behavior in the banking system. But deals with speculative behavior outside the banking system, which can be dangerous. So it's got pluses and minuses. I'll be just as happy when we can return to more traditional central banking. QE tapering has been a major concern to the emerging economies. There are concerns about the market turmoils, about uh, currencies. So do you think that Fed should take this into account when making decisions? I, I find these complaints rather strange, frankly. The Federal Reserve moves have been very modest, and they can hardly uh, account for great disturbances any place in the world, including the United States. Now, we do have very volatile international capital markets. That is a big question with Federal Reserve tapering or with no tapering, or whether it's tightening or easing. Uh, we have the risk of capital markets uh, creating uncertainty and volatility. And the only way I, I think raises very big questions, but individually, countries have to be prepared for that volatility. 
And if you're not, then you're going to have trouble, whether there's tapering or no tapering or tightening or easing or whatever. Uh, I was just in Korea. They were very much affected, as you may remember, in the financial crisis. Yeah, yeah, in 1997, yeah. I think they have drawn the lesson that they have to be cautious in their own policies, avoid too much debt, have enough liquidity in the economy, avoid too much leveraging. And they have not been bothered by these capital movements. And that's a lesson I guess we all have to learn. So the major responsibility of dealing with the consequences of QE lies with each country itself, right? That's right. You know, it's just totally out of proportion, this worry about what happens in some far off country from very small moves of monetary policy. Uh, they're hardly detectable in any uh, large view. Uh, so if, if it creates a lot of instability someplace, you better look at the source of the instability elsewhere. Inflation remains very low today, and considering the imminent American energy independence, more people are thinking that uh, we should worry even less about inflation. Do you agree? Well, I, I'm always worried about inflation, I and mean, that's in my blood, and because I think inflation is a danger for all economies, and it's easy to get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And if you begin getting a lot of inflation, mm -hmm. it's very hard to get rid of it and it will create great economic difficulties. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape on inflation in the United States now, but it's very important we maintain vigilance in terms of the possibility of future inflation. We have a new team at the Fed, Chairman Yellen and uh, Vice Chairman uh, uh, Fisher. Uh, how do you think of this new team, and how will their style be different from their predecessors? Well, I, well I, like all I can say about that, I can't comment in detail, but Mrs. Yellen, as everybody knows, has been part of the Federal Reserve. She's been very close to Chairman Bernanke. She has indicated she is emphasizing continuity in policy. 好的中央银行家是没有秘密的他们只不过是这样一种人就是大家还在跳舞的时候他们就能够把音乐停下来沃尔克就是这样的人这种人呢在当时总是令人讨厌但事后他会令人追念我想中国今天的中国和美国和全